Hello summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 1216. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League is to be able to adapt with the meta. And that's what we're here for you. If you know what's going to be OP before the patch hits, you'll be ready to hit the ground running without having to test to see if that one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks, or you're just a bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them in some normals or on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of the champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll be starting out with Master Yi. Back on 1213, the buffs they gave to him made him an absolute monster, and the hotfixes on the same patch and follow-up nerfs on 1215 didn't really hold them back. Being such a hyper carry in the late game means that he should be a really risky pick. His low early presence should be a pretty big weakness for the enemy team to exploit, but he doesn't really take as long as you think to come online. With just a single item, he has the DPS to 1v1 most champions in the game, and with just two or three items, he can usually start rolling team fights. So, what should be a high risk, high reward pick ends up being barely any risk at all with insane 1v9 capabilities. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list or how to deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up the process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aframu, and Dick Smithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7, ready to help you become the best. Our coaches are top-tier players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder to get to where they are now, and they're ready to share everything they've learned with you. So what are you waiting for? Join us at ProGuides.com. Next up on the list, we've got Sivir, who continues to be overall the best pick in the bottom lane, at least as far as traditional AD carries go. Some other picks may have their own little niche things they offer or have a slightly higher ceiling for hard carrying games, but Sivir brings a lot of consistency and is super easy to play. She can neutralize lane, has infinite wave clear later in the game, and has both super high utility and outrageous DPS in those late game teamfights. There just isn't any real downside to locking her in right now. Next, we've got Heimerdinger. He's possibly the very best champion in the game right now. I know, that sounds crazy. There are plenty of OP picks and there are plenty of champions that are good in multiple roles. But Heimerdinger is one of the very best picks in every laning role on the map right now. So it's not like he counters a particular playstyle or pool of champions. He just beats everyone right now. He has great shoving power, high DPS, strong burst, incredibly annoying poke, he even has a massive AoE stun for teamfights. He truly is a master of all type pick and one that more people need to start abusing. Another champ that's kind of in the same vein as Heimerdinger is Zyra. One of the biggest complaints you hear from support players is the reliance on a team, especially if you play enchanters. I mean, it's kind of how the role works, right? If you're not supposed to support your team, how can you win if there's nothing to support in the first place? Well, with Zyra, you don't have to worry at all about relying on your team. She's easily the most lane dominant champion in the support role with great pushing power and enough poke and damage to pretty much 1v2 the enemy bot lane. And she isn't just an early game champion that falls off as soon as lane is over. She scales super well, carrying with heavy poking power and huge teamfight presence later on in the game. With 1214 putting a big emphasis on dragons, junglers that have strong early presence naturally moved up quite a bit in terms of power. This has led to Volibear instantly bouncing back up to the OP tier, even though he got dethroned just a patch before. He has a very strong early game, with the easiest tower dives in the game at level 6 and transitions nicely as a frontliner that still does quite a bit of damage in later fights. Up next, we've got Swain. This shouldn't really come as much of a surprise to most of you. Ever since his mid-scope update, Swain has been an absolute terror, mostly in the mid lane, but with plenty of success in both bot lane roles and even some good matchups top. 
The thing is, he has a super safe early game, spikes pretty hard on just his first item, and then once he has two, he can pretty much carry every 5v5 for the rest of the game. It's not right that he's so tanky while dealing insane amounts of AoE damage. They'll have to do more than their normal slap on the wrist nerves to get him out of the god tier. For some reason, as soon as Singe stopped being insanely overpowered, Riot decided they had to immediately get him back to the top. So, last patch, they gave him a pretty big buff to both his passive and ult, making him once again one of the best champions in both solo lane roles. Dianas that are building Sunfire Aegis will be getting a small nerf this patch, but that really only affects Jungle Diana. Her best mid lane build already includes Rocket Bell over Sunfire. AP builds are actually going to be buffed with these changes. Assuming you land a full combo, passive auto included, on an opponent, you only need 200 AP to be dealing more damage than before. TLDR about it is that the Mindless Sunfire build will be a bit weaker, but when you build to carry, you'll be much more heavily rewarded. And that's exactly how all assassins should work. Personally, I'm quite glad to see how hard Riot is trying to stop the abuse of builds like this. There is a large difference between innovative fun builds and abusing item combos on assassins and bruisers that make them feel like super mobile high burst juggernauts. Which brings us to today's question of the day. What are some other super unhealthy builds that you think Riot needs to address? Whether it's rune and item setups or just a case of champions building in some way that makes them easy mode, let us know your answers down in the comments below. I gotta chime in on this one because I feel it too much. I think Sivir's wave clear comboed with harass is just too much. No AD carry, in fact, I don't think no champion should be able to be so easily rewarded for instantly clearing a wave, costing almost no mana and at the same time harassing every single person that stands close to the minion wave. It's too much. It's time to bring Sivir down a notch. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the video. Speaking of easy mode, the pick we'll talk about now is Janna. Okay, well maybe easy mode is a bit too harsh, but Janna does have a really low skill floor, but the same can be said about dozens of other champions in the game. Truthfully, Janna has a decently high skill ceiling and in the right hands can have a massive impact on how games play out. There's a giant difference between the average Janna that sits behind their AD carry in teamfights and the Janna god that cancels every enemy engage with a good Q or ultimate. Yet another support making our list is Taric. It's pretty surprising to see his play rate sitting so low with him only being picked about 3% of the time in plat and lower than that anywhere below. Given that he's the highest win rate standard support, that's just bonkers. What's even crazier is that Riot hasn't nerfed him yet. His stats are well above what they consider to be balanced. But hey, if Riot won't buff him and most people won't abuse him, that just makes him an even better champion to add to your pool. He is especially good if you can duo abuse with either a kill lane AD carry or some diver for later team fights. Next up, we've got the dragon lady herself, Shivana. She's still an incredibly consistent pick in the jungle, especially when she can still run the new build that started popping up this season, which makes her a very hard to deal with tanky AP bruiserish percentage HP damage monster. On top of her traditional role, she's also started doing very well in the top lane. Up there, the build is similar, though you mostly play her to split push rather than teamfight or take objectives. Another multi-role god tier champion is Mordekaiser. He's still putting up really impressive numbers across top jungle and mid lane with virtually no bad matchups in any of the roles. He'll pretty much always win or at least go even and then be a complete monster in team fights. The majority of players just build the same as always, picking up some mix of AP and tank items with Riftmaker as the core, but that shouldn't really be all that surprising. It's that Mord is another really broken Sunfire abuser. He's all about long drawn out fights, so the tankiness and burn damage really work well with him. On the polar opposite end of the champion spectrum, we've got a champion that seems to make every single person's list about one of the strongest champions in the game. You know her as Sona 2.0, it is Seraphine. The last round of nerf she got hit with got her decently hard in the mid lane and really hard as a support, but hey, as a bot lane carry, she's still a very good pick. She's able to completely neutralize any lane, has decent kill pressure, and scales insanely well for 5v5s. Remember, the nerfs they dished out were only aimed at her shield. You can still be a really OP utility bot by stacking ability haste, or you can build her more damage heavy, opting for Sork Shoes and Ludens for her core. 
Amumu is making the list once again with him being super strong in both the jungle and support roles. If you had to pick one role for him though, it definitely would be the jungle. He's an absolute nightmare to deal with there. Amumu is usually considered a farming champion early on since his ganks are a bit lackluster pre-6, but he isn't exactly the best duelist either. But his clear speed is so fast and healthy that he's pretty hard for any enemy jungler to punish. His godlike teamfighting later on makes up for that lack of early presence, and the Mumu's ultimate is easily one of the single best engages in the game, setting up allies for free wombo combos. On top of his ridiculous AoE crowd control, just does a lot of damage while taking very little himself. This makes him really hard, and in a lot of cases, an impossible threat for an AD carry to deal with on their own, and more often than you'd expect, you'll find yourself solo killing enemy backliners. The last champ we have for today is Lilia. She's recently shot back up to the OP tier for the top lane. She just doesn't really have any bad matchups, whether you're laning against a tank, juggernaut, or bruiser, any and all opponents either concede lane or get kited to death trying to fight for it. Once you get to two or three items, you swap from playing the War of Attrition to permanently looking to force all-in fights to the death. It can be tempting to try and push your lead onto the rest of your team, but avoid going for full 5v5s with Lilia. She does best in 1v1s or small 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes. And that about wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on 1216. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on any of our future content like this. And remember to let us know any unhealthy builds that Riot needs to try and nerf down in the comments below. One last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.